Well, let's just sing one more. Um, he is Lord. Amen. He is risen from the dead. <laughs> the appropriate day to sing that as well. He is Lord. May be seated. This morning we uh, meditate upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and obviously, uh, being Easter, a lot of people reflect on Him. But once you know the Lord, you have Easter every day. Right. It's not just once a year; it's always there. So uh, let's just pray and commit this time to Him, Heavenly Father. We come this morning to meditate upon your word, upon yourself. Lord, what great things you have done in our lives and for, for mankind. I just pray that you have your way this morning. Speak to our hearts and help us to understand and put aside our own thinking, our, our own ideas, and listen to what your word has to say. I just pray that you take control by your Holy Spirit, the way we speak and the way we hear. Uh, Pray that it will be for your glory and committed all into your hands in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I've got quite a few scriptures I like to read and uh, for you to reflect on and think about. You know, Easter is um, widely celebrated and sometimes some people they just decorate the church and do all sorts of things, probably forget Forget what it's all about. And some, it's all about Christ dying. And for some, it's, oh, Christ risen from the dead. But it is both. He, he died, he was buried, and he rose again. And it's the whole thing. Without dying, there's no resurrection. And just a resurrection... Uh, yeah, we're leaving the dying apart, it's, it's no good either. And just having the dying and no resurrection is no good either. And a lot of people have them still on the cross. 
they only focus on that. They don't focus on the resurrection. And if you focus on the resurrection, you, you have a living God. You actually believe that he rose from the dead. So he can be approached. He can be found. He can be uh, spoken to and have fellowship with. I just read, um, read Matthew 20, uh, verses 17 to 19. It says here, and Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said to them, you know, that's just one point. When he taken them apart, he revealed something to them. He always reveals things. Yeah, remember when he was talking about uh, the parable of the sower? They didn't understand. Then he took them aside and explained it to them. And here again, he takes them aside and he says, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man shall be betrayed and the chief priests and unto the, uh, unto the chief priests and unto the scribes and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scorch and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. Whoa! What a truth he conveyed to his children, his disciples. But did they get it? No, they didn't get it. And he made it so clear. It was the word to them and they didn't get it. They still had that idea, here is our deliverer, he'll take over Jerusalem, he'll kick out the Romans, and they had that idea. So even when the word directly came to them, they couldn't accept it or believe it. They got it later, but not then. So what happened? Were they waiting at the tomb the third day? No, they were all upset when he was crucified. They were all upset. The Son of Man shall be betrayed. They've seen that. They've seen Judas betraying him unto the chief priests and the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death. They've seen that. And they shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock. They've seen that as well. And to scorch and to crucify him. They've seen that as well. And cried and were sorrowful and and all these things. You remember Peter, you know, how he denied him three times and then he was so sorrowful. And the third day he shall rise again. Well, do we believe in the resurrection of the dead? I just heard this morning the story about Lazarus. Jesus rose him from the dead. Now, all the belief was there. Yeah, he said, I'm the resurrection and the light. And yet, people doubted. He said, take away the stone. Oh, Lord, by this time he already stinks. You know, it's four days. He's decomposing. Well, what's got that to do with the word of God? It does not even come into question. If the Lord says something, you don't want to question it. And you see, they did not understand when he was foretelling them that he's going to die on the cross and rise, rise the first, uh, third day. So people always have that natural uh, come into the way, the natural thinking or the historic thinking, or what we've learned over the past, or sometimes even by experience. Oh, that never worked before. Why would it work now? Because now you believe what God says. <laughs> you see, there's a huge difference. So what happened? They, they were upset. They were sorrowful. What Jesus told them, they didn't actually believe it or didn't see it, say it this way. In Luke 24, from verse 13, we know the story when, 
when they went, and behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. I think it's about seven miles. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. So they talked about how he was betrayed and how he was scorched and how he was crucified. They, they talked about it. But they didn't talk about the resurrection. <laughs> Isn't it interesting? And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes uh, uh, were holden that they should not know him. So their eyes were not open. They would not have expected to see Jesus alive, even though they were told by himself. And they couldn't get it. So they did not recognize him. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? They were sad because they killed the Lord. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? Haven't you heard? And he said unto them, What things? I like that. <laughs> you know, he wants it from you, from your lips. What things? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. That was all which Jesus told them. And then, but we trusted that he had been he which should have redeemed Israel, and beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. And what did he say? The third day he shall rise again. <laughs> yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which, which said um, that... He was alive. So they have had confirmation from those sisters. Confirmation by an angel. Confirmation by, by others that he rose. Confirmation of what Jesus foretold. So it is a confirmation of the word. And they still didn't get it. You know, it happens to a lot of us. We hear it, we read it, we get it confirmed, and we still can't grasp it. And we say we believe it, but our action shows something different because we don't believe it. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then said he unto them, Oh, Fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. All, not just one thing or the other, but all this prophet has spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scripture, scriptures the things concerning himself. Because you find Christ all along in here, all along, in everything. So he explained it to them according to the scripture. Took them through a Sunday school lesson. Really, that's what it was. Starting at Moses. 
You see, they walked with him, they talked with him, they saw the miracles, they witnessed the crucifixion and still did not understand. No understanding of true spiritual things, no power to live the life, no faith in the resurrection from the dead. That's where it was. Lack of the Holy Spirit equals lack of revelation because the Holy Spirit reveals you the truth. You know, everything else is learning, studying, and trying to understand, you know, one and one makes two, but that doesn't work with the Lord like that. You know, it's like, it doesn't work that way. It's revelation. Beginning at Moses and the prophets, all declared the way, the principle of forgiveness of sin, salvation, and eternal life in the Lord Jesus Christ. It all declares that. So what would he have said about Moses? He probably was telling them, you know, that the children of Israel were enslaved, that they were in slavery, and that... Um, at first, you know, uh, you know how Joseph was in Egypt, you know, sold to Egypt. We know the story uh, when uh, the brothers rejected him. And he probably explained that to him and how he was lifted up to be uh, second to Pharaoh and how he made a way for his people and all these different things. He probably told them how Moses met him in a burning bush. I met Moses in a burning bush, he probably told them. And I told him to go and deliver Israel. And I was with him. And the words he spoke were my words. He would have explained that to him. How they believe, believe in the word of, of God through Moses they had to actually die to self. You know, that's the principle again, the dying to self. Here comes a man who was a, a shepherd somewhere in a foreign country and comes and says he's delivering Israel and he's stirring up the people. They had to believe him that he spoke the word of God. They had to die to their own thinking and their own fears. You know, they had to come out of Egypt. Jesus explained it to them. Coming out of Egypt. Coming out the world. Red Sea crossing. Type of baptism. Entering in the promised land. The rest, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's the types. I'm sure Jesus explained all these things to them. They all came out of Egypt. They all crossed the Red Sea, but not all entered into the promised land. Why? They failed to die to their own thinking and believing all the word of God. They died once at the beginning to themselves, believing the word, applying the blood, but failed to stay dead to self and continue to believe the word of God. See, God has more for us, and we have to continue believing in the power of God and what he has for us, believing in the risen Christ. If he's risen from the dead, then you can approach him. He can speak to you. And he can do things <laughs> only Almighty God can do. So there is, I'm, I'm sure he would have taken them through Isaiah and different scriptures pertaining to him, dying, the lamb, without blemish and all these different things. And he explained it to them. And we know something spoke to them. And that's a wonderful thing. Even if you don't understand that something warms your heart and, you know, there's something different. And then we know he revealed himself to them when they invited them in, when he broke bread and then disappeared through the wall. <laughs> And then there was no more doubt. No more doubt in his word. And when he made the promise of the Holy Ghost, they started to believe it and do it. Wait. 
for, didn't say for a day or two, he said, not many days, wait till the Holy Ghost, gift of the Holy Ghost. They didn't even know what it was. But they waited in Jerusalem. I give you another scripture here. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verses 30 to 32. I, I read in the Amplified Bible. For that matter, why are we running such risks and putting ourselves in danger nearly every hour if there is no resurrection? I assure you, believers, by the pride which I have in, you, in your union with Christ our Lord, I die daily. I face death and die to self. That was Paul was saying. Because is it why would I put myself at risk? Why would I suffer? Why would I do all these things if there wasn't a resurrection? If Christ is not alive, why would I do that? And then he says, I die daily to self, to his thinking, to his carnal ways, to serve Christ. You know that dying once and for all, that's for Christ. He died once and for all. He doesn't die twice for your sins. He died once and for all, the Bible says. But we have to stay in that place where we dead to the flesh and believing the word of God. We cannot experience the living God if we still have the carnality to take over. Like, like I read at the beginning, they had the word that he would be crucified and raised the third day, but the carnality stopped them from actually seeing it. Even when he rose from the dead, they didn't see it. So we have to die to that own thinking and say, this is the truth and that is a lie. <laughs> if it's different to this. I said the other day, you know, there's three ways people are led. You know, it can be led by common sense. No, it's, it's good. Common sense is good. But if you're led by the Holy Spirit, that may override common sense at times. Or you can be led by the devil, by demons, and you lose all common sense. You have strong delusions, and you don't even know what's right and wrong, and you do all sorts of things. I mean, you see that in politics, how sick people get, and they're led by a wrong spirit. But common sense is great. But the leadership of the Holy Spirit um, can override that and lead you even to a higher level than common sense. So these disciples were just led by their own thinking, their own so-called common sense, and didn't realize that the word of Jesus Christ passed that by miles. You see, that's, we, we still face the same dilemma. We, we use common sense. Yeah, I know, I've got to do this. Nobody pays the bills for me and this and the other. And then the Bible says somewhere, and to his children he gives it while they're asleep. Take a nap instead of working overtime. Well, that doesn't make sense. If you have faith to believe. I've done that before. <laughs> True. I, I couldn't figure out how I could do things and pay for things and everything. And then I thought, well, these children, he gives it while they're asleep. So just lie down and rest and trust the Lord. And the Lord made a way many times, still makes a way. So they failed to die to their common sense and own understanding and believe the word instead. That's why they missed him when he rose from the dead. They witnessed the scorching. They witnessed the betrayal. They witnessed the crucifixion. But there was nothing there with the resurrection. That's where life starts. Because they have not that understanding. 
x to 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully now uh, yeah fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So that was the promise they could believe and wait at Jerusalem till the Holy Ghost fell, and they did fall. And once the Holy Ghost fell on them, they were a different people. They were different. They were bold. They were believers. They didn't fear death anymore or anything. Peter wouldn't run away. Peter wouldn't run anymore or deny the Lord. No, he had the power of the Holy Ghost to make a stand for the truth. And then we see people on the outside recognize that something supernatural has happened. That they saw it. That is supernatural. That's the same people and now they are so courageous and speak these languages and do this and that. Something has happened. And you know, if something happens to you, an encounter with the Lord, people can see that. Amen. They see it. They say, well, they either avoid you or, or say, oh, have you been with the Lord? They see it. It was now Christ in his people, in his church. See, before it was Christ with them, walking with them on the earth, but now it was Christ in them. Peter, now full of the Holy Ghost, preached the word of God. So he preached a sermon, a whole sermon to these people and explained. And he had such authority with what he said that they actually believed what he was saying. And they said, man of brethren, verse 29, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch, patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. <laughs> Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with him an oath, uh, had sworn with, a, with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on the throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. You see, he's preaching the gospel to them. Then he says, this Jesus has God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shared forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. So they got convicted by the word of God, the anointed word of God, and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do now? And here comes those amazing words. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Well, how do you repent? Well, we didn't believe this. Well, if you repent, it changes your life. It changes your situation. You stop doing it. Look, I'll give you one example. I've been in a, in a little church years ago, and a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, he brought somebody from work witnessed to somebody at work and he brought him to a 
evangelical meeting. Now, he came with his girlfriend. I mean, you could see by a mile, there were two different ones. Because all the, the women had long skirts and, and long hair. And here she comes with short hair, pair of pants, and quite worldly they were. He had earrings and things in his ears. And they came and sat in for the meeting. I, I thought, man, they were not scared to come under the preaching of the word. They weren't wimps. I tried to witness to somebody, some of uh, Emerson's old friends yesterday, uh, the painter man, I've forgotten his name. But anyway, he was sitting there and we started, oh, oh, he gets all nervous. Oh, I talked to Emerson, I talked to the other one. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, wimpish, wimpish, too scared to be confronted with the word of God. No backbone, no nothing. Nice people. But you see, here, these people uh, I was telling about, they came to this little meeting. And then they heard the gospel preached. And you know what? They gave their hearts to the Lord and repented. And you know what repentant meant to them? She moved back home to her mother and he stayed at the flat. They wouldn't live together until they got married three months later. That's repentance. That's fruit of repentance. So, oh, I believe this resurrection. I believe we all go to heaven. I believe, you know, I'm a seed of God and I believe this and never come to repentance. It's nonsense. You see, they repented and they, their lives was changed. And I remember the same man, I mean, he took his earrings out and all that. We went to a convention, and uh, after the convention, he said, look, it's just, I know I haven't got it. I know I haven't got it. I want it. I haven't got it. I haven't got the Holy Ghost. And uh, He was really worked up. And I said to him, I said, tonight, read I can't remember exactly what scriptures I asked him to read. I just felt led to say that. And they said, my friend, I will be in prayer for you. You know, that night he got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Change person. But it all started with repentance. If the repentance is not true, yeah. if the cross wouldn't have been true, if he would have only suffered a bit and not really died, there would have been no resurrection either. You see, it goes hand in hand, these things. So he said here, Peter says, repent, <clears throat> comma. So meditate upon that, repent. And then, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So the repentance is something you need to do. Well, I haven't really done anything wrong. Sometimes people think that, well, I oh, don't do any harm to anybody. Then pray and say, Lord, show me how I look in your eyes. I want to repent according to your word. And then he'll show you what you look like. And then you, you definitely run for help. And then to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's such an important thing. If we believe us in Jesus Christ, why would it be baptized in, in just some church or some, some uh, title? Did you know other religions have fathers, sons, and holy spirits? They call them Allah and Muhammad and whatever they call these things. Jesus Christ, that's where the power is in the name. Of Jesus Christ and that was the original message from a Holy Ghost filled man so when I, when I look at the Bible I want to do what, what he says if I apply a recipe all the ingredients are correct then the outcome will co be correct as well then you will get the Holy Ghost some get it instantly, some get it even before, 
when God accepts your faith, he'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. But there is a promise you can hang on to if you truly repented, you've been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. you can be assured that you will receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. If it's there or not, you keep on waiting for that infilling. So that's what Peter said to them. And then he says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So that promise is not just for me, it's also for my children. That's why you tell the children, but they still have to come through the same recipe of repentance and you can't repent for others you can ask the lord to forgive them their sins but you can't repent for them and then it says and with many other words did he testify and exhort saying save yourselves from this untoward generation and then they that gladly received his word were not everyone but they that uh, gladly received his word, were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. You see, we, we need to be baptized not only in water by, by the Holy Ghost. Romans 11, uh, 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. What a wonderful scripture. So it's not just working for Jesus. <laughs> it works for us as well, if that spirit dwells in us. You know, sometimes um, people like to, to have the word of God and the gospel without dying to self. You can say, have a resurrection, but no, no Good Friday, no, no, no crucifixion. As I said, Paul said, I die daily. It's not once, now I can do what I want. And some people are like that. Oh, I've now been baptized in the name of the Lord and they think that's, that's my eternal security and, and then go back into the old life. I die daily, he said. And you know, when we get the, the preaching and teaching of predestination and the foreknowledge of God, that's wonderful. But it belongs to the believer, the Christian, the born-again Christian. It belongs to him. Before you have that experience, you're actually not in that place. I mean, that people say, oh, yeah, yeah, we, we foreknowledge of God and the gene seed in me and this, and I was always with the Lord. That teaching is for the believer. That's not for the unconverted. I can't I come back to that. You know, it's your personal decision to surrender to Christ. We have to come that way. We're in this flesh for a reason. When His Holy Spirit draws you, then act upon it. It may be only chance in this temporary life. Now, I back you up something. You know, you hear people, they have had, uh, they died and came back and many people give witness of having gone towards hell and fearful terrible place and they cried lord uh give me a chance give me a chance and they came back and they were changed people i i remember years ago i i once played this um testimony of this howard pitman he had that experience, but he was not, he was a changed man when he came back. He was 
believing in the power of God. He, he knew that there was a spiritual warfare going on and all these things. He was a changed man. So that's why sometimes you hear people just say, oh, I've been lights, I've seen lights and the lovely garden and lovely this and come back and they're not even Christians and nothing changes. I wonder if, what they had. But uh, I give you just one little quote here. Well, Brother Ram t tells that story. You know, he got shot with a shotgun. Somebody accidentally shot him in the legs and he was basically bleeding to death. And then he says, and then lying there, then when the doctor done walked away from me and I felt myself sinking into a dark eternity and looked like, oh, a holler for Papa. Oh, Papa, help me. There was no Papa there. Mama, help me. There was no mama there. God, help me. There was no God there, he says. I was just, the, the, it was just the endless, horrible old nightmare, burning, blazing hell would be a pleasure being up a side of that. So it was so terrible that the burning, blazing Hell would be a pleasure. So you're really in darkness. And falling through there, I thought, oh my, over and over like this, I got into a place smoke and dark and sick. And oh, such a feeling. It was death on me. And I could see those women coming up to me with them kind of painted eyes like that. Now remember, that's been 45 years ago about 45, uh, 40 years ago, anyhow, going, they, there was going, he says, oh, I am to be there forever. Am I to be there forever? And then he said, forever. I said, oh God, if you let me out of here, I'll never be ashamed of you again. I'll never be ashamed. God, please give me a chance. Well, that couldn't happen to an elect son of God. What about pe people who haven't got the opportunity or, or people who's, who say, oh, I'll, I'll give my heart to the Lord uh, in a few years, you know, when a bit older. You may never have that opportunity. You see, we cannot rely for our salvation on saying, oh, I'm an elect of God, so something will happen anyway. No, we have to come the Bible way, and then we can look back and say, well, he loved me from the, for the, before the foundation of the world. I've been known by him and elected by him, and, and, and he, he uh, foreknew me before I even uh, sought Christ. That's the way. We cannot come an other way. You see, we cannot come just the resurrection without the dying yeah. and the being in the grave three three days or nights or how long it was. It takes the dying, the baptism, the Holy Ghost. Amen. It doesn't go any other way. And if we say, oh, I've got all this, you cannot claim your inheritance when you haven't come into the position where, where uh, Christ has not really died for you, that you get the inheritance. You know, it's, it's, it's so simple, but we need to, to get that. I've, I've got one, one son, he, he, he was influenced by somebody, and, you know, he was, oh, well, it doesn't matter what I do. If I'm elect, I'll be there anyway. And, you know, that teaching is for the believer and not for the unconverted. Uh, I, and it actually does more harm for the unconverted to have that, that belief. But for the converted, it is a assurance or a, a real blessing from the Lord 
so you don't need to worry, you know, you're mine. I'll, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. I love you, and I said I love you, and it's always there. But it is for the believers. You find these things in Ephesians. You find these things preached there to the believers, to the saints. But to the unconverted, Peter didn't say, okay, now you heard the word, you know, that seeds in you. You're going to hear the word. Now you're going to go to heaven. No, he says, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sell out your life to the Lord. And uh, it's so, so much in that. You know, it's, it's where, you, where you come from and where you're going are two things. You behold heaven. Oh, I'm going to heaven. And you look up and you walk towards hell. You know, that doesn't get you to heaven. We need to come the Bible way. And in this flesh, Christ had to die. He said, Father, if there's any other way, take this cup away from me. But there was no other way besides dying, physically dying, the sacrifice, shedding his blood, going in the grave. And then came the resurrection. And I, I, I believe there's no other way to get to heaven than through Christ. There's no other mediator. There's no other way, even though people preach other ways. And it's, there's no other way. I'll read you just one or two more scriptures. The gospel must be preached and the gospel must be received. Now, in 1 Corinthians 1, 17 to 24, Paul says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks and Gentiles, of course, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. You know, you may, to, to the world or to the clergy, you might sound like a, a little child, but I'd rather sound like a little child and believe the power of the cross. John 19.30 When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it's finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So there is the complete work of the cross. He died according to scripture, like it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 15. Uh, sorry, 1 Corinthians 15, yeah. He died according to scripture. And he rose again according to scripture. So we can rest in that and believe in that. We believe in the scripture. It doesn't have to, to be intellectual. It, has, it can be as simple as simple can be. As simple that a child can understand and receive it. I finish with Romans 10, 8 to 10 in the Amplified Bible. But what does it say? The word is near you. In your mouth and in your heart. That's the word of God. The word is near you. 
in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word, the message, the basis of faith which we preach. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, recognizing his power, authority, and majesty as God, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes in Christ as Savior, resulting in his justification, that is, being made righteous, being freed from guilt of sin and made acceptable to God. And with the mouth he acknowledges and confesses his faith openly, resulting in and confirming his salvation. So it's not just talk, but it's also our walk. And that seals the salvation. The Bible also says, make you... you, you you calling an election sure. How do you make it sure? By actually walking in it. Walk like a son of God or a daughter of God. Believe, don't fear everything and worry about everything. Walk like a believer. Place yourself, just uh, in closing, place yourself into the shoes of the children of Israel. Yes, we applied the lamb. We believed Moses we had sacrificed uh, the lamb and put the, the blood on the lintel, the death will, will not strike us. And it was true. Moved out and they, here they come to the Red Sea. And some started to fear. Now we're going to all die. The Egyptians were coming and here was the water and no way back. No way out. And here comes the word of God and opens the Red Sea. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Here comes God and opens the Red Sea. And they walked through it. And as I said, it's a type of baptism. They walked through it. And you may have gone through that as well. And then you experience all the miracles and things on the way. Sometimes you complain and moan and this. But God's always faithful and provides all the way. Then you come to the border of the promised land. You come to the place where he said, yes, you will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, no, I can't, I can't this, I can't that. And you see the, the giants and you see all the other things. And then that natural thinking comes in again and you stop confessing your faith. You see, that's stop confessing your faith. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. And what did they confess? No, we like grasshoppers, we can't take it. They confessed the Antichrist and not the Christ of the Bible. And it's very important that we confess this word and not some, some teaching or some idea or some feeling, but confess the word of God. If he said it, we believe it. And as I said, with, with Martha and Mary, when, when Lazarus died, oh, Lord, but he already smells, you know, he stinks. Come, take the stone away. And here the word says, take away the stone. Then take away the stone. Well, it'll be disaster if I do that. Take away the stone. Yeah, I find that's quite incredible. You know, the natural mind says, it's disaster. It stinks. Oh, half rotten body. I don't want to see my half rotten uh, uh, brother full of flies and all that. Jesus said, take away the stone. Oh, Lord, he stinks by now. Like he wouldn't know what he's saying. He had not had the word of God. He was the word of God. And if the Lord says, take away the stone. And you say, no, that wouldn't make any difference. You know, no, he had to, to shout and say, Lazarus, come forth. And he who was dead for days rose up. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? And they have fellowship later and all that. Yeah, you know, that stone is a stone, again, a stone of, um, what do you call it? Um, the stone of uh, not, uh, offense. The stone of offense. Even that was a stone of offense. The word said, take away the stone. And the mind says, oh, no, 
he, he's already half decomposed. Don't do that. He says, I'm the resurrection to life. Do you believe me? And he, he did it for their sake. That they could see the proof. And we have the proof today. And I tell you one thing. You, if you're a believer, you are the proof to the world. Nobody else. You're the proof that Christ is alive. You can tell people about it. And you can encourage them to believe. And you will find, if you talk to someone and they truly believe, you see the power of God manifested. Amen. Absolutely true. I, I've experienced that myself. Telling people about the Lord, and they actually believed it. And as a result of believing, they went on their knees with me and prayed. And then they saw the glory of God. I, I witnessed to a, a, a Muslim fellow from Algeria, or Morocco, he came, and he was just looking for a free ride. And he stayed at my house. And, uh, oh, he's looking for work. And uh, he said to me, oh, in the morning, just go to work. I'll find my own way. I want to sleep in. I said, no. We just prayed. I said, look, you want work. I said, the Lord Jesus Christ can provide you with work. And I said, go on your knees and we pray. I had this Muslim fellow on his knees. And I went on my knees and I prayed, asked the Lord to give me work. Next morning, he wanted to sleep in. I said, no, we prayed for work. The Lord will provide work. Took him in a car, drove him to a village about five miles down the road, opened the door, out you go at seven in the morning. I said, you find work. You get work here. He came five o'clock home, all excited. He has work, plus accommodation and everything else. You know, God does not let you down. If you witness the truth, and if somebody needs a bit of encouragement to believe, but you have to act upon it yourself that you're a believer. I mean, I can't say, okay, we'll pray again tonight, or no, we pray for work. There, is, there you go, and you got work. Anyway, let's stop here. But praise the Lord, you know, He is risen from the dead, and He can declare that to you <laughs> make it real even if your eyes are closed you can't really see it say Lord open my eyes I want to see it I want to see the living Christ in my life I want to see the power of God I die daily like Paul said I want to de be dead to my own self right now today again despite having been baptized in the past I die daily I want to experience the risen Christ daily amen let's just pray Heavenly Father, I'm so glad that you are the risen Christ, that you, that you rose your son Jesus Christ from the dead, that you are alive forevermore, that you've gone back to the Father, that you and the Father are one, and you came in the form of the Holy Spirit into the believer, and you are real even this day. You're the living God. I would just pray that if we have any... any uh, problems or or uh, requests that you would just meet that need that you would speak to us and and show us that you are alive i just pray for each one of us here that you would continue to move in our lives and hearts that we may walk uh, according to your word i just want to thank you for what you've done for us for the blood of jesus christ that was shed on calvary and how you gone through all these things knowing beforehand what you were facing but you did it because you loved us before we even knew about you i just want to thank you for the love of god and for being so good to us and this morning i just pray again for each one of us that we have this assurance that we are the sons and daughters of god that we can walk with assurance boldness and power not be afraid to witness of the truth not to be afraid to walk in the truth. I just commit us all again into your hands. And Father, if you have failed you in any way or grieved your spirit, cleanse us, forgive us, and make us sensitive to, to the voice of God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yes, he rose again. Let's sing that one as we go. <clears throat> he walked in Galilee. 
he walked in Galilee. He prayed for you and me. Yes, he came to set us free. He took the blame and with no shame. Yes, he died for you and me. But he rose again. The lamb was slain, but he rose again. And the people cried to see Christ crucified, but he rose, he rose again. Yes, he turned the water into wine. He opened prison doors to set the captives free. Yes, he died for you and me. But he The lamb was slain, but he rose again. And the people cried to see Christ crucified, but he rose, he rose again. And the Pharisees were lost. They sent Christ to the cross. Yes, they pierced him in the side. But he said, I'll come again. And the world won't be the same. Yes, he died for you and And the people cried to see Christ crucified, but he rose, he rose again. Amen. I just trust that you have opportunities this week to, to be a witness for Christ and to make a stand for him. You know, I, I said to Bron the other night, uh, I was asked once to, to attend a youth meeting uh, camp. It wasn't sort of my my thing, but they thought that would be helpful. So I went to this youth camp and we went out in the street witnessing. And here comes this man, big man, arguing and cursing and blaspheming and, and challenging the things of God. Guess who he picked? Who would this man pick if he comes in here today? Who would he pick? Maybe Mordecai? Maybe Joshua? I know, he wouldn't pick me. But I understood in a way, I said, come on, be a man. Why picking on him? Pick on me, you know? Talk to me about it. You know, I'm not frightened. He was, the young fellow wasn't sure. Uh, I don't know. I might, might have to ask my pastor. Or, or uh, I don't know. And No, you don't need to know much. All you need to say, I know Jesus Christ is my Savior. He died for my sins. The blood cleansed me from all sin. My life has changed. I'm a new creature in Christ. Get behind me, Satan. Feel free to say that to a person like that. 
Amen. Let's be a witness. God bless you.